Really do. We had a few ladies. Uh, Dr. Gedanus was here for one and a half, two years. Dr. Alswam was here temporarily. Uh, and I hope in the very near future there will be at least uh, three penetrations working here. So I quite agree with you. Okay. Um, after uh, a lady has given birth to a newborn, is it recommended for her to immediately see a pediatrician or is it okay for her to visit with the general practitioner? There are a few options. All babies are checked after delivery by the one who attended the delivery. Whether that be the midwife, whether it be the gynecologist, and if anything is noticed abnormal, they certainly call the pediatrician. And at that time you need to look what's what and, and find out. Uh, after discharge from the hospital, there are a few options. One option is to visit the ladies from the baby clinics, what used to be the White Yellow Cross Clinic and now uh, in, in, in the hands of government. Uh, the ladies working there know pretty well what they're doing, and if they find anything abnormal, in no time they send mommy and the baby to me, usually. Um, some people prefer to f see the family doctor, some people prefer to see the specialist. Uh, there are certainly uh, a number of babies who had some problems before, at or after delivery. Well, they are usually initially followed up by the penetration. And all the normal babies, then it's a matter of choice. Okay, so um, are there, there, there are certain tests that are done when a baby is born. Are those tests conducted, carried out by a pediatrician or they can be done by the midwife or gynecologist like you mentioned earlier? I would like to introduce a screening test for all newborn babies conducted around five days, one week old. And that's done in European countries, it's done in the United States. Uh, and that is to look for certain possible inherited diseases. Doing not, the test... Not to cut you across because, um, and I was going to ask that next, but you already started with it because I gave birth on the front side and I know that before you leave the hospital the pediatrician comes and checks the baby for just like you said various um, hereditary diseases and so on so that is not done on the Dutch side of St. Martin? The decision has been taken a few years ago by government it has up to now not been implemented for all kinds of reasons, and now, now it becomes a little difficult. It's easy to take blood from a baby, but the testing of most of those diseases cannot be done in this part of the world. It needs to be sent to Europe. Then you need a relation with that specific laboratory in Holland, in our case. That needs to be financed, and there needs to be follow-up. And the problem is, you need rapid results, so that logistic needs to be organized perfectly. You need to be able to find all the people, and if anything came out, you need to start doing something. So it's a whole big operation to organize that properly, and up to now that did not materialize, but I hope that in the very near future that will be. What we do, though, is that we try to take blood from most babies, or we hope all babies, at least to check for the thyroid gland function, because that is the, one of the most common uh, inherited problems in babies. If you find a baby who has a not well functioning thyroid gland, then you need to know it. Because if you don't know it and you don't do nothing, then that baby will become very retarded. Actually, he will become a real idiot uh, if you don't do nothing. If you know it in time and if you start in time the, the medicines required, then nothing will happen. So that, that, that's extremely important to test that as well. Now, that's what we try to do with most of the babies born here. Uh, but there are many more problems, like sickle cell, which I, I would like to test early. But then we need to set up a whole yeah, working group to make that happen. And on this island, with people from all over the world, and all kinds of papers or not papers, it's not so easy yet. Same nail color day after day. Not me. New Revlon Top Speed Nail Enamel. Cool color with a built-in top coat that sets in just 60 seconds. 
With Revlon, you can change your mind again and again and again. New Revlon Top Speed Nail Enamel. Are you looking for that prescription that the doctor just gave to you and you can't find at no other pharmacy? Well, the Orange Grove Pharmacy is where you should be. The Orange Grove Pharmacy, we carry a wide range of American and European prescriptions and drugstore items. We also do personal care products. We offer friendly services and 24 hours emergency delivery. Charges may apply. We're open Monday to Friday, 8 a.m. to 6.30 p.m. Saturdays, 9 to 1 p.m. Orange Grove Pharmacy, supporting a healthy lifestyle. Lasagna, a torture test for the best non-stick surface. The scotch Bright No Scratch Multi-Purpose Sponge with its unique cellulose weave whisks grime away, leaving expensive cookware scratch-free and spotless. scotch Bright, smart, simple and clean. When a parent brings their child to you, what are some of the routine checks that you do? First, I like to know who is who. Uh, I need to write down a few things. Name, birthday, how old are you? Sometimes important, what is the history? Uh, did something happen during delivery? Did something happen during pregnancy? What happened after delivery? Uh, then it simply depends on, on what the problem is, what, what the parents have with the child. Um, you need the story, the history, you need the physical exam. Now, you, you check out a child, many kids are not so difficult at all, they jump on that, that bench and they let them examine properly. And then it all depends from history and exam whether we need more testing or not. Now, for instance, if it's not clear, a story of a kid coughing all the time and uh, a little fever once in a while, uh, and by exam you don't find much special, then it could be that it makes sense to make a chest x-ray, just a photograph of the chest to look for, is there anything strange? Does it look like being an asthmatic child, bronchitis? Maybe the child has a kind of hidden pneumonia, you never know. Um, the story could be different, you say, hey, something else, uh, belly pain, and I don't know exactly, let's check for the urine, let's make sure there are no kidney stones, uh, and even kidney stones may happen in very young kids. Uh, so there, there is no real routine testing, it simply depends what the, what the problem is and what the f findings are with physical exam. Weight is very important, height is very important, weight is more important for me than the height though. Uh, you need to know whether that kid has a, a kind of normal weight for its age, depending the background. And, and that is on this island especially so important, because if you come from a tiny little Indian couple of parents, then I don't expect you to have the same weight as the indigenous Martin people here. Yeah. Um, so that type of testing. Okay. What are the ages of some of your patients? Because um, I visit you and I mostly see babies and I can on occasion say that I've seen probably an 11 year old. So what would you say is the average age of your patients? Because you did say a pediatrician deals with zero until 18 years old. Fortunately, after four or five years of age, many, many kids don't have physical problems. The usual physical problems are the, 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 the birth, the delivery time. Um, then a couple of months. Now let's start at the beginning. When a baby is born, he is he or she is more or less loaded by mommy's antibodies, acquired from mommy via the navel string. So the baby comes out and has quite some resistance against many many diseases. But that resistance is mommy's and not baby. So it's kind of borrowed resistance. Now that fades away after three to six months, and then usually the trouble starts. All the colds, all the belly flus, all the little trouble. Um, kids who go to some baby care, some kindergarten, whatever, uh, they are always amongst other kids who all have their little virus, their little diseases, and they pick up everything from each other. And that should happen, that's the only way to get resistance. So it's usually the between zero and four year old who, uh, who visit the pediatrician. And then of course there are unfortunately uh, some kids who have a chronic problem like asthma, allergies, sinus trouble, epilepsy, 
uh, but also kids who survived their uh, their birth problems. After birth, it could be that it was noticed that the kid has an, uh, an an heart problem, a brain problem, whatever. So there is a group of chronic sick children in all kind of degrees. It, it, it may be mild, it may be severe, and and they they need care for quite some longer and maybe lifelong. Now the the point is where do you start is easy. Where do you stop is seems so easy, but the real chronically sick kids, they usually do not want to leave the pediatrician. Okay. Not at 18, not at 19, not at 20. And in Amsterdam, for instance, in the, in the university hospital, they realized it some years ago, so now they hired some internist working in the pediatric clinic to go further than 20, 23, 24 for the chronically sick kids. But you're perfectly right, the majority of the kids within the pediatrician are the young ones, babies and then up to about four years. Okay, what are some of the most common complaints you have from your patients? And could you give us some tips as to how to avoid those complaints? Complaints about me or complaints about health? <laughs> health complaints. <laughs> um, I think if you sum it up on this island, the majority of the problems are uh, respiratory, upper respiratory infections, upper respiratory problems, asthma, allergy, cold, flu, that, that type of trouble. Uh, asthma is rather prevalent all over the world. 10-20% of all people in the world are asthmatic here as well. Um, I think we have a little more allergic problems in this part of the Caribbean and I relate it to the, to the wind blowing in from, from Africa, bringing in the hurricanes and most likely some allergens as well. So most of the problems are uh, yeah, upper respiratory, lower respiratory, allergy, sinus trouble, air trouble, asthma. That's the majority. Okay. Have you ever had any severe cases that you could not diagnose? Yes, that happens. Fortunately, not, yeah, not that often. And most of the time, at least you have a kind of idea, a hint, but sometimes you simply don't know enough, that could be. Could also be that you simply lack facilities to do very sophisticated testing and then you need to send kids elsewhere. And bear in mind that also in, uh, in children age, for instance, all kind of oncology cancer exists. And also on this island, I, every year I find a few kids with one or whatever type of, of cancer. Leukemia, brain tumor, belly tumor, what else. And then it's usually not so very difficult to recognize it, but then further, how to know exactly what is what, and then you need to send those kids to a real sophisticated clinic, uh, and in our system that is sometimes first Curacao, or otherwise straight Holland or States or wherever people can go. Want to. Thank you, Dr. Ofringa, for having been a guest today on A Better Place. Thank you for the information that you've shared with us concerning pediatrics. And to you, the viewing audience, I would also like to thank you for tuning in once again to A Better Place. Stay tuned as we bring you part two on pediatrics next time.